Good evening, I'm David Brown, and this is the Northern Sun Experience. It may be unusually warm and sunny for the end of January, but no one is shining brighter right now than a former Golden Bear football player from Concordia St. Paul. Defensive end Zach Moore was drafted by the New England Patriots in the sixth round last May, and nearly nine months later, he's in the Super Bowl. Moore is in Arizona this week for the big game against the Seattle Seahawks, and he's kind enough to join us now on the phone. First of all, Zach, congratulations to you and the Pats for making it. What's just this whole experience been like for you? Yeah, a lot of pandemonium, a lot of you know, anticipation, a longer work, but you know, it's just all exciting to be a part of. So, you know, just taking it one day at a time and just enjoying it. When you were at Concordia St. Paul, when did you know that you could potentially get drafted? It really didn't come to mind. I just, you know, tried to focus on what I had to do with Concordia. And, uh, you know, I was able to have, you know, some good seasons and gain the attention of the NFL. So it just kind of all worked itself out through hard work. Obviously, it's quite the adjustment to go from Division II football to NFL football. Are there any veterans on the New England Patriots who've helped you out this season? Um, yeah, I mean, we all, we all uh, work together as a team, but specifically in the D-line room, like, you know, Vince Will Fork, Chandler Jones, Rob Nikovic, you know, all the older veterans. Of course, the thing I think everyone wants to know is, what's it like to play for Coach Bill Belichick? Uh, it was great. Phenomenal coach. Um, it really gets everyone, you know, ahead in the, in the right mindset to come, come to work to prepare hard to, you know, take on our opponent and do everything we can to win. So, it's been very, you know, fun playing for him. It's hard to imagine, but last year you were playing games at Seafoam Stadium, and now you're going to be on the world's biggest stage. Have you had any time to reflect on what the past year's been like for you? Yeah, it's a crazy feeling. I always think about it more often than I should, but it's just, you know, just goes to show you how quick life can turn around. You know, you put your nose to the ground, so don't work hard, and, uh, you know, be blessed with opportunities, so... Just taking it as it comes and make sure, you know, you don't lose sight of, you know, the reason why you're here. So just working hard every day. Finally, Zach, being a Division II athlete who's made it to the next level, what did Concordia St. Paul mean to you? I mean, everything. I mean, that's, you know, that's my alma mater of school that gave me a chance, uh, you know, to get my education, which I did, and, you know, to play football. I met a lot of great people, friends, teachers, coaches, you know, faculty. A uh, real tight knit of a family type atmosphere as far as the football team. And uh, this is a place you know, I can never forget. I have a lot of great memories there. Again, that was Zach Moore, former Concordia St. Paul Golden Bear, current New England Patriot, and who may very well be a Super Bowl champion by this time next week. We'll talk with another Concordia football player who hopes to have a leg up when it comes to this year's NFL draft a little bit later. But coming up next, we switch gears to women's basketball. Former Augustana point guard Jordan Dalton is here to break down the past weekend, including how Northern State got back to its winning ways. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience, joined by former Augustana point guard Jordan Dalton, once again breaking down all things NSIC hoops. And Jordan, we're going to start with the women, Northern State. I think they're back on track a little bit. They won both their games this weekend by more than 20 points. Maybe proof that last weekend was a fluke or an anomaly, or what was it? Yeah, well, it's great to see them get, get back on track. Every once in a while, when you're on a roll, as they were before, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, you, you get complacent and you don't maybe finish all, all, all possessions all the way through and, and you really you really lose focus and, and forget what got, forgot what got you there. And so this past weekend, it was a great weekend for them. They got two wins by 20 plus points. Uh, Rachel Krogman came out into a great tempo and a great tone on Friday night by scoring 30 points and, 11, uh, and grabbing 11 boards. And that's the type of senior leadership that they're going to need throughout this uh, the rest of the season if they want to make a serious push toward the national championship. It was phenomenal to see them get back to the basics. You know, they held both Bemidji and Crookston under 45 points, under 31% field goal shooting, and only allowed 12 offense rebounds uh, in, in both games. And so it's great to see them really get back to who they are. And sometimes you just honestly, you need a wake-up call, and, and that shows you that you can be beat. And I'm sure they had a great week of practice and came out and proved it 
by getting two wins uh, this past weekend. Northern State right now, the only team in the NSIC actually ranked. They're at number 15 right now, but still a drop off from where they were at fourth a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, as you said, probably a wake up call for them as they get back on track with a couple of big wins. Well, the longest winning streak in the conference right now is Wayne State, actually. They've won eight games in a row. They're tied with Northern State with a 17 and three overall record. So what's the winning formula for the Wildcats? Uh, for them, we always knew they had great offensive firepower. That has been stated from, from really preseason you know they're still averaging 77 points per game and shooting over 45 percent from the field which is both second in the conference so the offense has always been there in my opinion it's really their commitment and focus on the defensive end that's really catapulted them back to, to where everybody thought they were going to be at the beginning of the season uh, and that eight game eight game winning streak they've held opponents to under 65 percent or under 65 points per game uh, six out of the eight times. And so it just shows that they have a commitment to the defensive end. They understand that they're going to have that offensive firepower. They're going to be able to score just about with anybody. But in order to, to really grit out tight and close games, you're going to have to get stops in crunch time when they need it. And they've shown consistently over this eight-game winning streak that they're able to do that. Well, speaking of consistency, they're both second in the league in scoring offense and scoring defense. And they're one of three teams that's receiving votes in the D2 poll, along with Sioux Falls and Minnesota State. And speaking of those Mavericks, they're third overall right now. Perfect 8 no at home, Jordan, but they're below 500 on the road. Now, as a former player, does that home crowd really provide an advantage? And regardless, why do the Mavs seem to play so poorly on the road? Well, I always joke, athletes are creatures of habit. You know, they, they like to do the same thing before games. They like to eat the same pregame meal. They like to go through the same pregame routine. And so when you're at home, you're comfortable. And, and when you're comfortable, you're able to play really, really confidently. And that's what they've shown. When they're at home, they play confidently. They're not second-guessing themselves. They're focused and they're ready to go. And like you said, on the road, they have to be able to establish that same type of focus if they really want to make a run toward the end of this uh, conference season. On the road, they you know, have given up 60 points per game, uh, committed more than 13 turnovers, and shot below 42% from the field in all those three losses on the road. And so they're going to have to find a way to really gain, regain that focus and that intensity that they have when they're in Mankato anytime they're on the road. And there's a disparity between their offense and defense, third in scoring, but just ninth in defense, just middle of the pack. Now, what was your pregame meal? Was <laughs> Whatever they were cooking over at the Commons is what it was. So you weren't that superstitious? <laughs> no, no, but at the same time, we still ate, you know, we had our walkthrough at the same time. We had our pregame meal at the same time. Uh, you know, we, we did just about everything in the same order. And what that does, like I said, it really creates some consistency uh, for yourself as a team. And when you have that consistency, you're able to be comfortable on the court. So once again, you're not second guessing yourself. Uh, you're not overthinking the game. Players play great when they're playing off of instincts. And when you're comfortable, you know, going into the game, that makes it a lot easier. Well, we'll see what the Mavericks do on the road from here on out. Well, what is a matchup that you're going to be looking forward to this upcoming weekend? A uh, huge matchup this weekend in Minnesota State versus Northern State. I think that'll be a great game. We just talked about it. Uh, will Minnesota State be able to go on the road and, and get a get a tough win in a tough environment against a, a Northern State team who really seems to be focused and intent on, on going for the NSIC championship? All right, well, sounds good. When we come back, we're going to switch things over to the men's side. Talk about his alma mater, who's ranked number six in the poll right now, and Minnesota State Moorhead, who's keeping pace with them with a long winning streak. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct, LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience, joined once again by Mr. Jordan Dalton. Well, Jordan, the hot continue to stay hot. Minnesota State Moorhead and your alma mater, Augustana, continue to win a 10-game winning streak and a 12-game winning streak, respectively. All four wins by both teams by double digits. Are these two schools winning in the same way, or are they winning in different ways? Well, on the offensive end, they've proven to, to be the two top offensive firepowers in the entire conference. Both teams averaging over 83 points per game. And also averaging over 16 assists per game. And what that tells me is they're very, both of them are very efficient basketball teams. Everybody understands their role. Uh, they, they play within themselves. When you're shooting over 50% from the field and over 40% from the three-point line, you understand your strengths. And as a team, 
they don't care who gets the glory. And that's a great thing to watch both of these teams play. They have no problem sharing the basketball. Like I said, they don't care who gets the bucket as long as their team gets the win. And I think that's what's really put them into that, uh, those two upper echelon teams in the conference. That as well as experience. You, you got Augie who, who starts three juniors, and you got uh, Moorhead who starts two juniors and two seniors. And so you have guys that have been battle-tested. They've been in tough games on the road, at home. Uh, they've been in blowouts. They've, they've had to keep their composure in all types of different situations. And that type of experience really is a trickle-down effect and creates a lot of confidence in the rest of the, the team when you know you can rely on that type of leadership. And that confidence has led to consistency for both teams. Augie is first in scoring offense. Minnesota State Moorhead first in scoring defense. And the Dragons, they're ranked in the top 10 right now, eighth for the first time since 1970. So this is a once-in-a-generation team, isn't it? And, and kudos to those guys. You know, like I said, you, you got quite a few seniors on that squad who have been there for sometimes five years, and they've stayed the course. You know, as guys like Jordan Rear who have get, gotten better every single year. And, and that's what you want to see uh, from your student athletes. But you also love to see those guys get rewarded. They've put in a lot of time in the gym and, and, and have really committed to the process and to each other. And it's great to see that team have some success and hopefully it continues on the rest of the way. Dragons ranked number eight. Augie is six, and that's their highest ranking since 1988. Well, aside from Augie and MSU Moorhead, the next longest winning streak actually belongs to Concordia St. Paul. They've won five straight games. What's working for them, and can they play spoiler down the line? Well, it's interesting. When they have a new coach, as Joey James has come in from, from Vermilion, uh, from University of South Dakota in Vermilion, and it takes him a little while to establish the type of culture he wants. And so he, he has to come in there, and the guys have to buy into what he's selling. And what he's selling right now is tough nose, gritty, athletic defense is what he's doing. And, and so it's no surprise that in the beginning of the year it was a slower start. But now the guys seem to start believing in him. And, and why wouldn't you start believing him when you have a five-game winning streak on the line? They're a very tough team to play against. They create a lot of havoc, forcing over 13 turnovers per game, per game and only allowing 64 points per game. And so their team identity is now on the defensive end. They're going to make it work. Uh, for every single shot you get, they're going to try to create as much as many turnovers as they can. And that's Joey James, and that's his imprint on that program. And, and he's going to continue to recruit the guys that he needs to be successful in that system. And it's great to see them finally having some success so far this year. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned the numbers, 64 points per game given up. They're second in team defense, only 13th in offense right now. So obviously something must be working on the defensive end if they're in the lower quarter of scoring in the entire conference. And, and offense is always something that, that lags behind defense, mainly because it takes chemistry. It takes continuity between five guys working together on the court. On the defensive end, you just have to have heart energy and effort. That's really all you have to have, you know, on the defensive end. And that's something that there's no X's and O's, you know, really with that with that scheme there. They just have to go out and play hard. And that's what they've been doing over this five game winning streak. And that's why they've been so successful. We'll look to see if they can continue that winning streak to seven this weekend. Well, what's a team besides the ones we just mentioned, the Augies, the Minnesota State Moorheads and the Concordias that's flying a little bit low right now, but could surprise down the line? I really like Upper Iowa. They pay off. They play a fast, intense, up tempo style of basketball. They're going to get a lot of shots up, and they're going to force you to speed up your tempo. And the reason I like them for, for them to play spoiler is because a lot of teams aren't that comfortable playing at that speed. And what happens when you get sped up, you start turning the basketball over, you're not getting good looks at the basket, now your field goal percentage drops, where they're comfortable at playing at that speed. And so if they're able to keep that tempo going, they had a great weekend. Like I said, they dropped a tough one to Augie, uh, but did get, did get a uh, win against Wayne State. So I, I really like their team. I like their tempo. I like their style. They, they play within themselves. They know who they are. And they're going to be a tough out come conference tournament time. Yeah, they played Augustana pretty well. I mean, it was a double-digit loss in the end, but still they played them pretty tough in your opinion, right? Yeah, and, and you're talking about the, one of the best teams in the conference when you're talking about Augustana. And they were right uh, – Upper Iowa was right there with them. You know, they, they, they made – they turned Augustana over. Augustana had a high uh, season high in turnovers for that for that game, and they just made a couple more plays down the stretch, hit their free throws at the end of the game uh, to really seal the victory. But Upper Iowa was was in the game the entire time, and that's a, that's a even though it's a loss, it's something you can build off of. We'll watch out for the Peacocks down the line, and then what's the matchup you're looking forward to this weekend? A uh, big matchup with Minnesota State and Moorhead. We'll we'll see. I feel like for Moorhead to have some success this weekend, they're going to have to figure out how they're going to guard the pick and roll uh, between Zach Monahan and Austin Mirai. That They run that at 75, 80% of the time, and you're going to have to get the ball out of Monahan's hands and make somebody else beat you. And, and on the other end, we'll see if Minnesota State can guard three-point line. And, and Moorhead's only lost this year. They, only made, they went three from 22 from the three-point line. 
And so that's a staple of their offense. They're making over 11 three-pointers a game. And Minnesota State is going to have to figure out a way to really contest those jump shots and, and force guys to be uncomfortable in that game. Does it seem weird we're talking about the Augie winning streak, the Minnesota <laughs> State Morehead winning streak? Minnesota State, they're, they're still a great team, but they're, they're kind of under the radar right now a little bit. Yeah, and it, like I said, it's always tough to, to, to call Minnesota State under the radar because they're consistently in the top three of the conference every single year, it seems like. And, and so what they have to do, they have two superstars in Zach Monahan and Austin Marai. They have to have a b better supporting cast if they're going to move forward. Because those guys, you know, they're going to have off nights. And, and if they don't have that supporting cast to, to, to be there to lift them up, they're going to continue. They're going to have some struggles against some of those top upper echelon teams. Well, we'll see what happens with Minnesota State. More had big challenges in the next two weeks. You got Minnesota State this weekend and then the big matchup with Augustana on February 7th. Jordan Dalton, thanks a lot. No problem. When we come back, we talk with another Concordia St. Paul football alum, Tom Obarski, who just spent this past weekend kicking in the Senior Bowl. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. We already heard from Zach Moore, and now we move to another Golden Bear alum who could also be making his way to the NFL. We're joined now on the phone by Concordia St. Paul kicker Tom Obarski, who just got back from the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Tom, first of all, the Senior Bowl is essentially a college football all-star game that hopefully gets you some attention from pro scouts. What was the week leading up to the game like for you? I mean, first, it was just, just an awesome experience just to be able to be out there and to be playing with guys that I'm used to watching on TV and... Um, just kind of enjoying the experience and um, kind of getting out of that small school feel at Concordia and just having an awesome experience with meetings and uh, just meetings with coaches and with players and um, just being there, soaking it all in and, and enjoying it. What was your initial reaction when you actually got selected to play in the Senior Bowl? Well, it's funny. My, uh, my agent had called me. And he asked me if I was sitting down. <laughs> and that was, that was probably a good thing that he said that because, I mean, I was not surprised, but just, I mean, just couldn't believe it at first that, that I was invited to just such a profile game and to just be invited to be on the, this kind of stage. So just, just disbelief at, the, at, at first, I guess. How big of an honor was it to not only be selected to play in the game, but also being one of just two players from Division Two who were chosen? I mean, coming from a small school, I knew that um, or I was hoping for, you know, just some shots here and there. But uh, like you said, just being one of the two Division Two guys there was just awesome to represent the small schools and to have have this type of exposure and this 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 shot from coming from a small school finally tom the nfl draft is just a few months away have you or your agent heard anything received any positive buzz about potentially getting a shot at the pro level i know that there has been some contact with uh the coaches here at concordia and so far i think it's been positive um um, and I guess, I mean, all I'm, all I'm hoping for is just an opportunity to um, show what I can do. And I think that uh, the Senior Bowl was one of those opportunities. And um, I think as a whole, there's, there's a positive buzz. And um, I know that there's a lot of work to do over these next couple months and just preparing for everything that's going to happen. But um, I hope to think that I can at least get an opportunity to get invited to a camp or a mini camp and um, just have the ability to, to compete. That was Tom Obarski, Concordia St. Paul kicker, who could make it two consecutive years of Golden Bears drafted into the NFL. When we come back, it's DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct, LLC. Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda.
Welcome back. It's time for the best of the best, the top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. At number five, Minnesota Crookston's Kevin Larson beats the buzzer. The Golden Eagle corrals the loose ball and lets it fly just before the end of the first half. Here's another angle on the half-court shot. Minnesota Crookston didn't get the victory over MSU Moorhead, but this golden flight lands at number five on my top plays. For number four, we go to 4-0. Annika Whiting steals the cross-court pass and takes it all the way for Concordia St. Paul. A threat at both ends of the court, Whiting shows off her athleticism on this play, so give her a hand for her hand in every part of our number four play. For number three, we stay in St. Paul, only this time at Sioux Falls, Marie Malloy staying with it. After missing the layup, she steals the ball right back and finds Allison Klostergaard for two. Here it is again, persistence pays promptly for the illiterate Marie Malloy managing to make a play at number three. At number two, more defense turning into offense. Zach Monahan picks off the pass from Minnesota State and swoops in for the two-handed flush against Sioux Falls. Here's another look. The preseason player of the year has lived up to the hype this season with plays that keep him up above the rim. But for our number one play, look over your shoulder because that's where Annika Whiting is after receiving a beautiful pass from Keandra Nix against SMSU. Check it out one more time. Nix with the great no-look dish to Whiting for the easy bucket. The Golden Bears top the Mustangs and are riding high with the top play of the past week in the NSIC. One more quick note before we go. Congratulations to Minnesota State's indoor track and field team. They are ranked number one in the Coaches Association computer poll for the first time in school history. So a big congratulations to the Mavs. You can read more about it at northernsun.org. Thanks once again to all of our NSIC member schools for their contributions to this week's show. We'll be back next week right here for another Northern Sun Experience.